epistle of James, the second chapter. A few scriptures for our meditation this morning. James talks about faith and works. And I just was impressed all week with this passage in Scripture. And uh, I want to begin reading at the verse 14 for a few verses. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man may um, say he have faith and have not works? Can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, be warmed and filled, notwithstanding you give them not those things which are needed, needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had offered Isaac his son upon the altar? Seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect? And the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called a, a friend of God. Ye see then how that by works a man is justified, and not by faith only. Likewise also was not Rahab the harlot justified by works, when she had received the messengers and had sent them out another way. For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead also. And I want to stop the reading right here. The theme of this message is faith without works is dead. And if you would just bow your heads with me, I want to lift up a prayer. Heavenly Father, we just come before you in humility and simplicity, that, Lord, you would encourage our hearts this morning and exhort us, Lord, what we need to do. Let your word penetrate. Let your word bring conviction. Let your word bring strength. We thank you for the way you speak to us, and we give you all the glory and honor in Jesus' name. A cursory reading of this passage, one would think there is some contradiction between what Paul wrote and what James is writing here. In Romans, Paul wrote, for we maintain that a person is justified by faith apart from works. In Ephesians, he writes, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and not of yourselves. It is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. So are Paul and James in disagreement here? Well, the answer is no as we go deeper into the Word of God, as we understand the Scripture, because they were looking at it from two different perspectives. <clears throat> Paul and his preaching was saying that what he was battling against is the Judaizers were trying to bring the, the law back into the, the gospel message. And he was saying, no, and it's, not by, it's not by works. It's, it's not by doing those things, the circumcision specifically. And here James is saying that it's another facet of way looking at, at the, the faith is, is that the saving faith, the saving faith will automatically will generate those works. 
that they're so much together. In the King James uh, version of the Bible, which we, we use extensively, as you well know, there is something left out in the translators that was here in this first verse. What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man may have faith and have not works, can faith save him, is what it says. But they left out a participle that says, can that faith save him? Saving faith. A faith that doesn't have works with it is a dead faith. Can that faith save him? No, it can't. They're not, they, you can't separate faith and works. The operation of the Holy Spirit in, in the faith that, you know, is something that causes us to want to do and, and to generate those works. Something within that faith, something there causes us to have the works that God describes. The works that are so necessary. It's a hollow confession. I have faith. And James is saying, well, where are your works? They have to be a part of it. It's inseparable. You can't have one without the other. Faith and no works, it doesn't work. It's a dead faith. Immediately, the, the Holy Spirit is, if he's alive and well, if he's doing the work in our hearts, there is going to be works that follow after. There's going to be something that takes place in our soul. There's going to be something that wants us, that causes us to do those things. It's not, well, I'm, I have faith and I'm okay in the eyes of God or in my own estimation and, and I can sit back and just take it easy or I can, I can just kind of coast or I can, I can just, you know, let things come as they come. No, that's, that's not it. It's, it's, it's a, a faith that, that causes us to want to do the things of God. A faith that, that reaches out. A faith that is, is you know, something that, that wants to do and, and convey the love of God and the will of God. It's a vital union between faith and works. And in this 17th verse, faith with no works is dead being by itself is basically what he's saying. And it's, it's a picture of a, a tree that, that he drives home, that the tree is, is the faith and the works are the fruit that it produces. Remember Jesus when he went by that, that, uh, that tree that, that had, had beautiful leaves, beautiful leaves, and, and he looked among the leaves, he started to separate and see if he, and he couldn't find any fruit. And he cursed the tree and they came back a few days later and the tree had withered. So it is with our faith. Lord, if we have, if we have that saving faith, that faith that Christ gives us, if, if that faith is within us, praise God, it is going to produce works. It is going to produce works. I've had, you know, people ask me the question, when they knowing I'm a pastor, and they said, How, "How's your church doing? How's your church doing?" And sometimes I, I, I'm stumped to try and answer the question. I don't want to talk negative. I don't want to talk. I don't want to spin things. That, oh, everything's great, and the, the preaching is wonderful, and uh, everything's going swell. Or you know, I I don't know how to answer that question. And it goes back to how is our works and us as a church, as a body of Christ, how is our works? How is it? Have you ever asked yourself that question? How are my works? What, what, is, what is my legacy? What, not that we're looking at ourselves, but what is, what is somebody going to think about when, they, when I'm dead and gone, when I'm, be, I'm passed on? What is going to be the legacy? What is going to be, what, what works did I have? 
remember Revelation chapter 14, John says, and I heard a voice. And it said, right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord, for they do rest from their labors, and their what? Their works do follow after them. Not that they were a great second baseman, or, or more, they, they scored more goals in hockey, or, or they, they, uh, they did something uh, magnificent in this, this corporation. No, their works, what's he talking about? The works do follow after them. What did they do for Jesus Christ? And James is being very, very specific here and, and, and exhorting them that faith without works is dead. If, if you think, well, I'm sitting in church two or three times or once a week or whenever it is, and that's, that's something, well, it, it's something, but it, it's not much in the way of works. Can I be very, very candid with you? I, I believe God's looking for something much more than that. It's the efforts. It's the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. It's being surrendered to the Holy Spirit. Allowing the Spirit of God to work through us. Giving us the tools that we need. Giving us the intuitions and the discernment to behave and, and to do the things that he would cause us to do. That God looks at as works. And their works do follow after them. What will be your legacy? What will people say? about? I remember that brother. He was always encouraging. He was always praising the Lord. I remember that sister. She always had a kind word or she'd call me up and pray for me. What are your works? It can be volunteering to clean the church. It can be coming out to a, a cleanup that we have once a year. What are the works? Faith without works is dead. It's dead. And he uses two examples in the Old Testament. Abraham, he believed God and it was imputed unto him righteousness. His, his faith was perfected by his works. Inseparable. He believed God. It was faith that caused him to move. It was faith that caused him to do what he did. And Rahab, the prostitute, same thing with her. She believed in the, in the, in the God that was all-powerful. She believed in God, but it went beyond just believing. She, she did something. She hid those spies so they would not be captured. There was something there. Lord, help us this morning. What are some of the marks of saving faith? A faith that looks not at itself, but at Jesus Christ. Looking at Christ. It is a faith that agrees with God's words, both inwardly and and with other words. It is a faith that in itself is not a work that deserves reward from God. But it just believes that God is all truth. It's a faith grounded in what Jesus did on the cross. And by the empty tomb. We live in a. Can I say a narcissistic world today? It's all about me. It's all about what's good for me. It's all about my life. It's all about what's convenient for me. And self-sacrifice is, is something that you just don't talk about, you know, outside of the church. 
That's the world in which we live. And, and what was Jesus about? About others. He was all about the sinner. He was all about spreading the gospel and the good news. He was all about, all about doing the things that the, the Father commanded him to do. His example of dying on the cross. There is no greater example of works. No greater example. It's a faith that will naturally be expressed in repentance and good works. It's a faith that may sometimes doubt Yet the doubts are not bigger than the faith. And we know what that father said, Lord, I believe, but help my unbelief. It's a faith that wants others to come to faith. It's a faith that says more than, Lord, Lord. You know, in Matthew, it's a passage that I know we have mentioned, but we don't speak on it very much. And I think I know the reason we don't. This is Jesus speaking. Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many will say to me in that day. Listen to this. Many will say to me in that day. Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name and in thy name have cast out devils and in thy name done many wonderful works? And then I will profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. You ever thought about that verse? Well, naturally, that's meant for someone else. That very definitely has got to be for someone else. Not me. The word says many. Many will say to me in that day, how are your works? How are my works? Am I being honest with the Lord? Am I looking at my life and saying, Lord, am I, am I pleasing you? Am I doing the things that bring glory and honor to your name? Not just sitting in church, but am I doing the things when no one sees, no one hears my thoughts? Am I doing the things that bring glory and honor to your name? Am I making the effort to bring my family to church? Am I making the effort to instruct them? Am I making the effort to lead them and guide them in the paths of righteousness? Am I doing that? My son-in-law, Ron, sent me something on YouTube of a pastor, different faith, that had one of those experiences that we read about that he passed, he, he, he almost died. Well, he was clinically dead for some period of time, so many minutes. Went into a bank to see someone and, and collapsed and got home somehow and uh, collapsed in, in, at the home and his, his wife was there and called the ambulance, the paramedics. And In that time, he was clinically dead. He found himself carried to the doors of heaven. The angels carried him. And he knew he didn't want to die. He didn't want to die. And he says, I, I want to plead my case. And the angel said, we'll bring you to the doors. And he got to the door and he says, I knew if I went in to the doors, it was all over. I couldn't come back. There was no coming back. But I stood there. I was on my knees on the, on the ground and in front of the doors. And I spoke to God and I said, God, look at all I've done. 
I went to seminary. I preached your word. We've adopted 30-some kids and, and orphans and took care of them. And we did this and we did that and we did that. And God looked down at him and said, I never knew you. And he says, I was crushed. I said, God, you don't understand. And the angels carried him away for a short time and they brought him back. And he said, this time I came back. I didn't say a word. I didn't say a word. And God began to talk. And he gave me a message for the church. It's not important what he said, that part, but he says, I didn't talk. But he said, I was, in relating this, this thing that happened to him, he said, I was shocked. I was so sure I was okay. God, don't you understand what I've done? I've... I've, I'm preaching your word. I've made sacrifices, blah, 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 blah. God says, I never knew you. These are harsh words. What, what, did, what, what did Jesus, what did he put this in there for? What, what did he say? Why? Because there's an accountability. Oh, yes, there is grace and there is mercy. And his mercy is so great. And His grace is so great. But there is an accountability for every one of us, my brother and sister. There is an accountability. The parable that Jesus taught of the man, the, the ones that gave, they had the talents. He gave one five and one three and one one and, and they all did something with the talents. Most of them did something that you know, increase the talents, but the one, he hit it. What did you do with the talent I gave you? What did you do with the gift I gave you? What did you do with the salvation gift that I gave you? What did you do to praise my name? What did you do to further the gospel? What did you do to be a witness and a testimony? What did you do? We don't, many preachers don't want to deal with that. that. That's too harsh. It's all grace and mercy and God loves us and everybody's going to make it to heaven but the truth is everyone's not going to make it to heaven. It's for those who have a faith that is alive and well. A faith that perseveres. A faith that has works. You know, I've heard people say in the past, well, I'm baptized with the Holy Ghost now. I'm, I'm good for heaven. Everything's okay. That's, you're, you're, you're fooling, you're, you're kidding yourself. Why did God equip you with the Holy Spirit? Why did God equip you with, with the, the tools that you need? Why did he do that? So you could fight the fight and live the life and be a witness and a testimony. I think of what Jesus said, the parable he talked about, the, the vine and the branches. And what was the purpose? What was the purpose? Were, were the ana analogy to us today, what was the purpose? That we may bear fruit. Not to sit there with pretty leaves. Oh, look at me. I go to church three times a week. I'm doing swell. No, it's, it's to have the fruit. That the fruit is manifested in our lives. Praise God. The praise, the worship, the experience. Living the life. Oh, Lord, help us. In Isaiah, he writes that they that be of thee shall build up the foundation of many generations. We read that scripture so many months ago. Build up the foundation of many generations. That's the works he's talking about that we should have with the faith that God has given us. 
Are we building the kingdom? Are we building the foundation of many generations? Are we laying that foundation, my brother and sister? Are we doing the work that God called us to do? Sometimes it's difficult to even pick up a hymnal and sing. Or praise the Lord. Or, or say a prayer. I think, come on. Don't you think God expects more than that? Don't you think he deserves more than that, more importantly? Oh, it's such a sacrifice. I came this morning. Praise God. You're here because of his love and his mercy. You're here because he died on the cross for you and for me. Hallelujah. It's an act of faith he wants in us. Not, not, a, not a passive faith, but an act of faith. So the kingdom of God suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. we got to take it by force, my brother and sister. There's nothing going to be given to us in this life. You think Satan's going to, oh, well, you're baptized now. I guess i got to get out of the way. You're, you can have your way. Oh, no, Satan's going to come after us harder. you got a target on your back now. If I can come after the spiritual ones, if I can come after the leadership of the church, I can destroy the church. Same to a family member. If I can take out, if I can take out the spiritual member of that family, I can hurt the I can hurt the family. I can get more. Faith without works is dead. It's a dead faith. It sounds harsh, but the word of God is true. It's a dead faith. Some of well, I go to that church, they preach the Holy Ghost, and, and uh, they've been in, around for 100 plus years, and, and uh, the, a wonderful legacy, and, and uh, you know, God worked in that church in the beginning, and, and God uh, did so many great things, and, and I go to that church, so I'm okay. No, you're not okay. It's not because you go to this church, or any church for that matter. It's, it's having that saving faith and the works that do follow. Everything we read in the epistles, many scriptures that talk about going from uh, glory to glory, about maturing in the Lord, about growing in grace, growing in the knowledge of Christ, not staying at the elementary stages, not being an infant in the spirit, but growing, getting away from the milk of the word and getting into the meat of the word. Praise God. Oh, Lord, help us this morning. I want to see the church grow. I want to see the Holy Ghost move, praise God. And the Lord is asking us, and starting with me, how are your works? How are your works? How are your works? Are we going to be like that pastor and say, well, Lord, I, I preached your word. I, I cleaned the church. I, I did this and I did that. And... And I took care of that, and I, I picked up people, and how are your works? How are your works? Oh, Lord, help us this morning. It's a faith that not only does, not only hears the word of God, but it does it. Are you doing are you doing the word of God? Are you doing what God called us to do? Are you at the services? Are you at the prayer meetings, the Bible studies? Are you testifying? Are you lifting prayers? Are you praying at home? Are you reading the word? Are you exercising in the faith? Are you looking for opportunities to encourage and draw people to Christ? 
And I say this for myself first. Oh God, help us this morning. I was hesitant about this word. I said, Lord, I don't know if I can deliver what you want to say. But I think it's very clear and very obvious. Faith without works is dead. And what do we have today in Christendom? It's faith without works. We have a lot of profession. A lot of everything's okay. I, we can live like the world and do what the world does. Sometimes you can't tell the, the, the church person from the worldly person. You, they do the same things. Which one is which? You can't tell. And we shy away from the word, I never knew you. Oh, I don't want to hear that. I, that Brother Ron, that's so negative. That is so... What a put down. What? It's, yeah, it is. It's accountability. God is saying to you and to me, look what I have done. I sent my only begotten son, the only way you and I could be saved. The only, only way is the perfect lamb of God was sacrificed on the cross died a cruel death, shed his blood, paid the price for all the past sins and future sins for all of mankind. He died. Number one. Number two. He resurrected from the dead and glorified and sits at, the, at my right hand. And he sent the Holy Spirit. He gave you the power to live the life. And all the tools that you need all the understanding that you need. You don't have to be a Bible scholar to serve the Lord. No, you got to have an open heart and surrendered heart. God says, I've done all of this for you. When I could have wiped you out, when I could have started over, when I could have eradicated the human race. And you think... You've done something for me? Oh Lord, take us off our high horse. Humble us under your mighty power. God is so good. He is so good. We sing this song all my life. He has been faithful. All my life. Some of you should not be here this morning. Some of us should not be here. But the mercy of God. And we're going to go out, get in our respective cars and drive home or go to a restaurant or whatever and maybe let all this go past our mind and think nothing about it till the next service. And God is calling. God is saying, church, come on. How are your works? How are your works? Are you working for the Lord? Well, that's the pastor, and that's the assistant pastor, and that's the deacons, and that's the musicians and the singer. No, it's every one of us. Every one of us. And works without faith is dead. Some people have the impression, well, I'll just do good works and that's going to get me into heaven. That's not going to do it. Forget about it. Well, who then can be saved? One that has a sincere heart, a surrendered heart, who wants to serve the Lord. You think God doesn't see our flaws and our, our, our frailties and our, our, our failures? You think God, God does. He sees it all. But that's why we have grace. And that's why the blood of Jesus is there. If we commit any sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us. 
We don't let that sin stay there. We make mistakes. We fall. We fail the Lord. Every one of us fail the Lord. Aren't there pages you'd like to tear out of your book? Or some I'd like to tear out? But I'm thankful for the mercy of God and the blood of Jesus, praise God, and the promise that if you confess your sins, I will forgive. And they're washed away, praise the Lord, hallelujah. Can you imagine that? You know, someone does something to hurt your feelings or, or you know, make you disappointed, angry, sad, whatever. And they may come up to you and say, you know, brother, I'm sorry. I apologize. Please forgive me. And you said, sure, brother, it's forgiven. But you know, and I know, the thought is there. We may not dwell on it and try and put it behind our minds, but we know the thought is there. And I heard someone say it like this. If God knows everything, he knows everything about everything, past, present, future. God knows everything. He doesn't, God never says, oh, I just thought of this. He knows everything. Everything is all before him. He knows about that sin. How does he reconcile that? And someone said, he chooses not to remember that sin. Oh, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Oh, Lord, thank you. Their iniquities and transgressions I will remember no more. Aren't you glad for that this morning? What a God we serve. God says no matter how far you've fallen, no matter where you are, I still love you. And I'll make a way for you if you'll just open your hearts. You'll just surrender. Oh, Lord. Help us this morning. I'm going to close. Brother, sister, would you come forward? For as the body without the spirit is dead, so faith without works is dead. The body without the spirit, our breath in this case, is dead. Faith without works is dead also. Lord, help us to exercise. Help us to consider our works. Encourage and strengthen us this morning. I know this word was hard. Believe me, I'd like to deliver a different word to you. I I'd like to tell you about love and grace and mercy and all the easy stuff to preach. But I got to tell you the whole counsel of God. And James here stands out to me in, in this passage. He says, brethren, I got to tell you this. Faith without works is dead. You can't get by like that. It don't work. It's not that you're justified by works, but faith and works are inseparable. One goes with the other. You can't have faith and not works. Saving, true saving faith. You can't have that without works. It's, it's going to happen because of the Holy Spirit, the born again experience within you. It's going to generate those desires. Holy Spirit is going to move you. Holy Spirit is going to lead you. The Holy Spirit is going to help you to overcome. Oh, Lord, would you help us this morning? Help us to have those works that will bring glory and honor to your name. May his name be praised.